全部吸収されたアバターだ数はよーく以上あ,あ、The Internet、Mother of Us All。Summer Wars is a Japanese movie directed by Mamoru Hosoda and released in 2009 that postulates the future of Mark Zuckerberg's moistest wet dream. What if you could launch ballistic missiles through VR chat? Kenji Koisu is a teenage math genius who works part time as a bottom banana code monkey for Oz. What is Oz? Functionally, Oz is the internet. All of it, compressed into a single website. You can do anything at Oz, from reading the news to filing your taxes, and with any device, including a goddamn landline. The flip side is that modern infrastructure is so deeply integrated with Oz that you won't be able to call anybody on that phone unless you have an account. Kenji's classmate Natsuki impresses him into service as a gigolo to pretend to be her boyfriend during a family reunion celebrating her great grandmother Sakai's 90th birthday. While Kenji grows closer to Natsuki and her extended family of Shinzo Abe voters, Oz is taken over by ChatGPT. Complications ensue when Wabisuke, the bastard love child of Sakai's dead husband, returns. With ChatGPT causing havoc in both Oz and the real world, everyone must come together to defeat it and restore Oz to its rightful state. An omnipresent, inescapable social media app that you literally can't live without. The visuals do a lot of heavy lifting to render the characters memorable. Look, after my accident on the slip and slide, I can't remember anyone's name anymore. I can't even remember the voice of my own dear mother. But that's okay, because each one of the characters has a distinct look that I can point to and say, Oh yeah, that's, that's the cop with the crush on his own cousin. Yeah, that's the lady who loves baseball. That's Japanese Dale Gribble. Summer Wars cuts between the real world drama of Natsuki's family and the digital chaos erupting in Oz. The result is a sci fi script which is exhilarating yet relatable in a way that would make Hollywood producers cry envious tears. That's if they even knew the anime exists. Kenji is our window into Natsuki's family, the Jinochi clan, and they are a clan in the medieval sense. Their family's lineage goes back hundreds of years, back when men were men, hunger built character, and samurai were legally allowed to decapitate you if you looked at them funny. The Jinochi are proud, foolish, but ultimately lovable, and will meet enough of them to fill a Tokyo subway car. Sakai is the matriarch of the clan. And, with her toothless smile and warrior spirit, is the only force that could lasso all of the distant relations into coming to a family reunion. She represents a traditional, slow paced way of life that's being trampled over by electronic mania. There's a sense that if she died, the entire family would unravel for good. Summer Wars is about the challenge of maintaining real connections in a fundamentally disconnected society. It's no coincidence that the antagonist of the movie is an AI. Spoilers. When ChatGPT plays Mahjong with the traffic grid, Sake combats it by pulling out her death note and, with nothing left to lose, finally writing in the last letter of everyone's names. But not before calling up everyone listed, people she hasn't talked to for years, people she punched in the mouth, and cajoling them into getting out and helping in any way that they can. <laughs> As ChatGPT swells with power and crises mount, the family and Japan teeter on the brink of falling apart. It's only when the characters make the concerted effort to band together and preserve their connections that there's a hope for victory. The movie is science fiction, but it doesn't take the coward's way out by claiming that the story takes place in the near future, because it wants you to think about how our world is right now. The breach in logic you've probably noticed is, why would anyone ever make the electrical grid accessible through Friendster? And well, in the real world, they wouldn't. 
for obvious reasons. But speculative fiction is inherently flimsy. Its purpose is to ask a question, not to write a lore wiki. Interrogating the basic premise misses the point and is the choice game of dullards. Instead, I think it's better to ask what the movie is trying to say. I think it's a cautionary tale against the all-pervasive integration that seems to be the end goal of some futurists. Those gremlins will be satisfied until you can start your car from your toaster and pay your rent through Twitch. Summer Wars doesn't have a systemic solution to the modern problem of disconnection. Kenji and crew don't fight to dismantle Oz. That would be a ridiculous fantasy. Look, nobody would be happier than me to see a sinkhole swallow all of Twitter's servers into the mantle of the earth. But somebody else would just come along to take their place. We have to learn to live with our machine overlords. And Summer Wars posits that the way we can do that is to hew close to the people we care about. To invite them over for dinner, go to a baseball game, or just give them a call. Joseph and Dale's relationship represents this new way. Joseph was being bullied at school until Dale taught him martial arts to defend himself. But do you know how he taught him? Through Oz. I'm guessing he used PictoChat? The movie has some flaws. In trying to keep the plot nice and tidy, Summer Wars permits a little coincidence. Two of the major players in the plot conveniently happen to be Jinochi members. I know that this is a big family, but it's not that big. And what the hell are all the government officials doing during all this? Catching up on Supernatural? Ultimately, with its vast array of characters and story of generational transition, it's a movie for all ages. But not in the condescending way that marketers mean for kids. Rather, it'll hit you differently, depending on what stage of life you're in, whether you're an adult, pupa, or larva. Summer Wars reminds us that no matter how old you are, at what calamities come knocking on the door, sometimes you need to take the time to have dinner with the fam.